well, what a what a week it's been, I suppose. But um, obviously, the biggest news, certainly, of last week was the vote of no confidence. Now we know that this had been, shall we say, on the table now and been threatened by, uh, especially the uh, the ERG, for oh. Uh, certainly the past two years since Theresa May came in. And now we have the situation of where the ERG was completely, absolutely defeated. In fact, they only got, um, I think it was 37%. If memory serves, it might not have been, I can't remember now. <coughs> but it was roughly about 37% of the vote. And this really is... Uh, and certainly it goes to show, um, there's a really good artic article in GQ, uh, which we might go through later on uh, in the week, because it spots on, uh, gets at how in how politically incompetent Jacob Rees-Mogg actually is. Um, and I, I have to say, after reading it, yeah, I 100% I agree uh, with that statement that the guy makes in the article. It's genius. In fact, we will probably do it later this week, because it is really good. Um, but other than that, what have I been saying to people for uh, oof, the last two years? Every single time this has come up in discussion, I've always said, doesn't matter, May will win. Now, why have I said May will always win? Because May is the sacrificial lamb on the altar of Brexit. Because many of these Brexiteers know that things aren't going to get better for this country. You've got Jacob Rees-Mogg saying, oh, it'll be like 50 to 100 years before we see any benefits. Wait, <laughs> what? So for 50 to 100 years, you've got to inflict the most, you know, biggest political injury on this country for decades. <laughs> and, uh, and not to say what's going to happen to the economy, that's going to go down the crapper, especially now with the deal that's just been done with Japan. Um, I think we can officially say that you're going to see lots of Japanese companies, shall we say, just quietly move over to um, the EU, certainly within the next 10 years. So all this time since the 80s, all the time that Margaret Thatcher spent trying to get Japan to invest in the UK and open up factories here... Um, is gone. Just like that, as Tommy Cooper used to say. Um, <coughs> but what was the big political movement and all the political mistake Mark made? That was not putting forward an alternative. Because as I have said time and time again, there is no alternative in this sort of period to Theresa May. All these Brexiteers had a chance. They had a chance to take power when uh, Cameron left. Not a single one stood up or they stood up and went, um, actually, no, I'm not going to stand up. Because they all knew the mess and the mess that they were was about to happen and unfold before us. I've said this numerous times throughout all these videos that we've made that the past two years have shown the UK nothing more than we've already got the best deal with the EU possible, and that's being a member. We ain't going to get a better one when we leave. There is no impetus for the EU to give us a good deal when we're outside the club. And no matter how you try to tell Brexiteers this, they seemingly don't listen and seemingly don't care. Yet the economy of this country is vital to how we run, to how we run things like the NHS, um, provide help provide people with jobs. You know, no one's going to come and set up shop in a stagnant econ economy. That is not going to happen. You've got wages in this country that are still not back at a level they were before the 2008 crash. So you're, what, £400 worse off before Brexit? We're now looking at, from what estimates I've seen, about a thousand to um, a thousand two hundred pounds worse off because of Brexit. So add that extra four hundred pounds on to that, you're 
<coughs> let's be kind and conservative, and let's say that we're about £1,400 worse off now. Thank you, Brexiteers. But the biggest irony of all of this, and I'm not sure whether Jacob Rees-Mogg has um, got this or not, he has gone round since he lost the vote saying that his 37% should be listened to. But hang on, Jacob, you lost the vote. In fact, you've had two votes now to um, put your Prime Minister in place, and calling for a second vote might, isn't that, doesn't that seem a bit hypocritical, considering how much he doesn't want a people's vote called for? Let alone the fact that he's now calling that the Prime Minister should listen to the 37% of people who wanted her out, and who want the hardest Brexit possible, and yet, when people <coughs> are bringing up the argument of the 47% of this country who voted to remain should be listened to, they are discarded and said, oh no, you lost, you need to get behind Brexit. Why the hell um, are we, you know, are people like me who voted to remain, going to get behind Brexit? We all knew what was going to happen, we all knew the mess it was going to make, and I have said for the past two years, enjoy these last two good years while we can, because I keep on saying to Brexiteers, we haven't left yet. On March the 29th, when we officially leave, then you can start saying what a success Brexit will be, because that will be the day when we can actually start charting the absolute catastrophe that Brexit will be. So enjoy these last two good years, Brexiteers, because as I've said multiple times, we've got the best deal we can possible. So I'm generally hoping that May's deal doesn't go through, and by the looks of it, the European Union has turned around and just gone and said, we're not going to negotiate a better deal than that. And as Theresa May has said, it's either her deal or no deal. And quite frankly, you know, MPs aren't, you know, subject to the will of the people. They are subject to what is the best situation for their constituencies and the best national interest of this country. And those are best served by staying as a member of the European Union.